The Solomon Islands are recognized for having some of the most beautiful and diverse coral reefs in the world. Over 1,000 species of fishes have been reported here, as well as 494 species of corals. Extensive coral bleaching events have been rare in the Solomons, and corals have flourished. Photographs like these provide a record of some of these beautiful reefs, but they are only general snapshots that are difficult to analyze for scientific purposes. However, photographs can document change over time. Note the arrow that locates the same Parites coral in each of the following scenes. In this photo, taken in 1992, corals cover nearly 100% of the picture. But here is the same view in 1997, two years after a major storm destroyed this reef. Now the reef is covered by algae and only a few small corals. Fourteen years after the storm, the corals have grown back, and once again it looks like a coral garden. And 23 years after the first photograph, no one would ever know, except for these images, that the reef had once literally disappeared and then entirely recovered. In 2019, our team returned to the Solomon Islands, this time to conduct a more quantitative reef survey working from the dive vessel Bilikiki. Several sites were intensively photographed, including the reef at Mbulo Canyons in New Georgia, a popular dive site with beautiful coral gardens accented by brilliant yellow Parites lichen corals. Dr. Cindy Hunter from our team selected this 10 meter by 10 meter area to map in great detail by taking photographs. Many photographs. This image is a composite of more than 2,000 photographs taken by Cindy and collated by Nicole Pedersen in the Sandin Lab at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. But this 2D image contains much more detail and can be further processed to render a 3D image. And this image can be animated. This structure from motion, or SFM imagery, has significant scientific value. Over time, it can be used to quantify changes in coral and algal cover and diversity. It can also be used to analyze the physical structure of the reef, as well as track the health of individual coral colonies through time. You will not see any fish in these images because the compilation of photos is based on the alignment of matching structures like corals that don't move relative to the camera. Using this cutting edge and data rich technology, the Sandin Lab has initiated the 100 Island Challenge, including sites such as these in the Solomon Islands. These images can be used to inform communities and managers around the globe about the status of reefs in their care, with much more precision and greater detail than ever before possible. Leaving Mbulo, we fly over Mary Island and head to Mane Island, 88 kilometers to the east-southeast in the Russells Group. Mane Island is familiar to divers as the location of the famous dive site known as Mirror Pond, and farther south is our study site, dominated by the blue staghorn coral identified as Acropora youngi. The area surrounding Mirror Pond is rich in corals and fishes as seen in this panoramic view taken in 2015. Leaving Mirror Pond, the bottom is covered in dense coral as we swim southeast towards the edge of the reef. About 46 meters south of Mirror Pond, there is a small alcove, again covered in dense thickets of acroporid corals. This video was taken in 2007, and the diver is Marge Awai. Finally, 185 meters south of Mirror Pond, this magnificent stand of blue Acropora young eye coral appears, as seen in this video taken in 2009. We have been visiting and photographing this spot since 1992. Fragments of this coral, collected in 1995, under a permit issued by the Solomons government, are now being cultured at the Waikiki Aquarium in Honolulu, the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, and the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta. In 2019, our team was set to visit this spot and conduct a more quantitative assessment of the area, 
and the diversity of fishes associated with it. But to our great dismay, the coral field was entirely decimated. From reports we received, this area was heavily impacted by a strong storm surge earlier in 2019. Here, Chuck Berkland, Cindy Hunter, and Allison Green view what remains. Chuck Berkland shot a series of photographs as a record of the devastation. However, even though the coral is destroyed, the fish counts are about the same. In 2015, we counted 37 species of fishes here, and after the storm, Allison Green recorded 39 species. But there are some differences. The coral feeding butterfly fishes are no longer present. Despite the damage, there is evidence that the coral is not entirely dead. Some of the fragments are still blue and alive, and as indicated by these arrows, they are showing clear signs of regrowth. This should be an area worth revisiting many times in the future to see if it returns to its former state, or perhaps a different community of corals and fishes. Cindy Hunter is visible in the center of this drone video shot by Brian Green. Using the length of Cindy's scuba tank as a unit of measure, we can calculate that the area originally covered by the Acropora young eye was about 115 square meters. Cindy moved to a location just to the north to record another fly-through image of a 5 meter by 10 meter section of the reef. Unlike the photographs and videos of this general area from prior years, the reef is now dominated by massive corals and corals with sturdy branches. While some table acropora are present, there appear to be no staghorn acroporids or other more fragile coral species in this detailed fly-through image. And there are large areas of the substratum with no coral cover at all. This structure for motion imagery creates a detailed baseline to monitor change over time in the reef structure and coral community. Will environmental conditions allow more delicate corals to repopulate this reef? Worldwide, coral reefs are rapidly disappearing due to environmental disturbances, including pollution and sedimentation, coral diseases, coral bleaching due to rising sea temperatures, and increasing ocean acidity due to rising carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Storms are also a threat. Even though corals can regrow after storm damage, the frequency and severity of storms may hinder their recovery. The Solomon Islands have, so far, been spared the devastating effects of widespread coral bleaching, but some areas that have been monitored for many years have suffered substantial reduction of corals and fishes associated with storm damage and sedimentation. The images presented in this program emphasize the value of long-term monitoring and stress the need for expanding ocean conservation policies for fisheries management and for careful land use practices to reduce sedimentation. It is our sincere hope that Solomon Islanders will continue to strengthen their conservation efforts to protect their beautiful and diverse coral reefs far into the future.